strength through his grace. May this child grow up to, to be a person after God's own heart. May these parents be enabled by your spirit to teach and train this child that he may grow up in the wisdom and the stature and in the favor of, with God and also with men. May he also, as the body, and may we, as the body of Christ, do all that we can to help them in this task. And today I want to pray over Christian and Jessica. I'm going to ask Dan if he'll lay his hand on Christian and Joyce, lay your hands on Jessica. Father, I thank you this morning for these parents. I thank you for this wonderful gift, Lord, that you've given them. And Father, I pray today, God, when challenges arise, God, that you would give them the wisdom and the knowledge they need to face these challenges. And God, we know today they never have to face the challenges alone. You said in your word you would never leave us, nor would you forsake us. But God, you would be with us always. Even in the difficulties of life, help them to know that you'll be there. And Father, when this child gets sick, Lord, that you would give them the faith and know that you can raise him up. And God, I pray, God, that they would understand that you are their resource and you are their strength. God, give them wisdom and give them knowledge. God, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Can we give them the Lord a hand today? Amen. You can all stand again, please. We know that the, the Lord told his disciples more many times over that he's going to go away and prepare a place for us someday. So let's worship as we sing this old hymn, Just Over in the Glory Land. Glory, Lord. 
from the goodness of God, amen, and his grace and mercy. Listen as Brother Jason sings this verse to this worship song. Goodness of God. Oh, yes. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy. Mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father It's running after me. Yes, it is. 
Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. God, I give you all of me. Yes, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All of my life, God, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Because all my life you have been faithful. Has He been faithful? Oh, yes. All my life, God, you have been so. So good, oh, with every breath, every breath I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life, all my life, you have been faithful. Oh, God, you are so good. You are so good, God. Yes, God, you are so good. No matter what we go through, no matter the troubles, no matter the struggles, no matter what it is, no matter how many times we have failed, all my life, have been faithful. Faithful though we don't deserve. All my days I've held in your hands. Cause your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Yes it is. After it's running after me with my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. Surely goodness and mercy will Your follow me all the days of my life. After, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Oh, Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Because all my life you have With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Has He not been good to you? I know you've heard it before, but I look back and I look back and I look back and I see all the times that I've failed, all the times that I have fallen. And every single time I look back, all I see is Him lifting me right back up. Not kicking dirt in my face, not telling me you shouldn't have, not telling me that's what you deserve. Instead, what He does is with compassion and love, He reaches down, He grabs a hold of my hands, and He says, let's go again. Let's go again. Because he's been so, 
So good. So, so good. With a raise in your hand, you're saying, Brother, I, I need that God that is so, so good. I need Him this morning. Brother, it's mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, we serve a God that will take care of that need. Sometimes we look and we think, I don't know, this is a big, big situation. My answer to that is, is we serve a big, big, big God. A God that has no limits. He has no boundaries. He has no lines. There is nothing that He cannot take care of. We're talking about a God that spoke existence. He spoke the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth. That's a powerful God. And this morning, I want you to believe as we pray that God is going to take care of that need. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, God. We come to you because you are a good, good God. And God, though there are times we might not deserve it, but there you are, there to take care of us, there to wipe us off and, and, and to move on, God. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for never giving up on us, for never leaving us. And God, you know the needs this morning. You know the troubles. You know the struggles. You know the dilemmas of each and every one that is here, each and every one that is watching God. And right now we're coming together believing in an unlimited resting faith that miracles are going to happen, that great things are going to happen, God, and you're going to move in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we sing that chorus one more time? Just lift your voices to the Lord this morning. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I
clap of praise today. Come on, we're not clapping for a God that doesn't deserve it. We're clapping for a God that is worthy of all glory, honor, and praise today. He's the one that gave us life, isn't He? And He is worthy of our praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can be. We can clap, we can sing. And we would not just touch just a little bit of God's worthiness. Amen. Amen. He is so worthy this morning. If you have your Bibles today, I'd like you to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 23. And we're going to read verse number 21. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 21. Aren't you glad you serve a God that just isn't in a box or a God that you can't feel or experience? But you serve a God that you can feel and experience in your life. Amen? Amen. And doesn't it feel good to be in His presence this morning? I don't know what you've been through this week, and I don't know what you have to go through next week. But I know right now in this moment, we're in the presence of Almighty God. Let's enjoy our time here right now. Forget about last week, forget about tomorrow, and let's enjoy Jesus right now as we get into His Word today. Amen? Can you do that with me this morning? Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 21. If you found that, say amen. Amen. If you didn't, say oh me. Nobody? All right. If you don't have your Bibles, it's on the screen. It says, When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, for the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee. And it would be sin in thee. This morning I want to preach on the thought of how dedicated are you to your vows. How dedicated are you to your vows? Let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, for your presence. I thank you, God, for who you are. God, you are still the resurrection and you are still the life. And Father, I stand here understanding, God, that I cannot do this by myself, nor do I want to. God, I stand here asking, God, for your help. God, that you would help me this morning, God, to deliver the word that you want spoken here today. Not my words, but your words. God, I pray you would anoint every word that I say. Let me say it all under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, anoint every ear to hear it and every heart to receive it. Father, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. And I left my water over here. How dedicated are you to your vows? I believe this morning God takes vows and commitments that we make to Him very seriously. Amen. But we live in a day and hour right now where people will make vows and people will make promises and people will make commitments And they don't feel bad at all when they don't follow through with those. Amen? You ever have anybody make a vow or commitment to you or a promise that they were going to come and help you to do something or they made a promise or a vow to you for something and they didn't follow through with that vow? It didn't feel very good. It made you either upset, angry, or it may have made you sad or may have hurt your feelings because they didn't think it was important enough to follow through with the commitment or the vow that you made to them. How do you think God feels this morning when we fail to make or follow through with those vows and those commitments that we make to God? I believe this morning that God takes vows and God takes commitments very, very seriously this morning. If you made a vow to your wife or your husband when you were married, I believe this morning God wants you to stay dedicated to that vow. It may be difficult sometimes, but if you made a vow or a commitment or a promise, how many knows we need to stay true to that? Amen? If you made a promise or a vow to someone, how many knows we need to keep our promises? We need to keep our promises. 
not only to God, but to one another. Even though the world that we live in have lost the value, or they put no value in making a promise or a vow, we as children of God, we must stand behind the vows and the commitments that we make to one another. Amen? If we say we're a Christian and we don't follow through with our vows, I don't think we're a very good Christian. That's just me, but that's between you and God. The Word of God says that when we make a vow and a commitment to God, that God counts it very seriously. God made promises and God made vows to you and I, and God takes those promises and vows that He makes to us very seriously this morning, don't He? God will never, ever make a promise or a vow and say, well, I changed my mind, I'll just take it back. Or He won't make a promise or a vow and say, I can't fulfill the commitment. If God makes you a promise and God makes you a vow, God is committed and God will come through on His promise and His vow or His commitment that He has made to you and I. God is committed to the vows and the promises that He has made us. Hey Amen. If you were here Wednesday night, I kind of talked a little bit about this. But I looked on some different websites, and some said there were over 3,000 promises in the Word of God. Some said there were 8,000 promises in the Word of God. I don't know how many is in there. I've not found them all. Amen. But if they're in the Word of God, and God has made a promise in His Word, God will fulfill that vow or promise that He has made. Amen. If we die in our sin, amen, the Bible says that we will spend eternity in hell. But if we die with Christ in our life, the Bible says we will spend eternity with God. How many knows God can't change His mind? That's the way it will be. Amen. God made a vow to us in John chapter 3, verse 16. We all quote it. We all know it. But God made a few promises and a few vows just right there in John chapter 3, verse 16, which we all were taught as children. But if we ever stopped and took this, amen, scripture that we quote personally, that God made a vow and God made a commitment to this world and God made a vow and a commitment to me and to you, amen, not just to the world around us, but to us individually, amen. God has made a vow and a commitment in John chapter 3, Verse 16, you all probably know it. You don't even have to turn there. But what does it say? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. The first vow and the first commitment was made there by God, amen, when He said, whosoever. He made a vow and a commitment to whosoever, to anybody, to everybody. He said, whosoever shall believe in Him, right? Everybody God has made a vow to. If you'll believe, then He'll do this. But we first must believe, right? If we believe, God will do such and such. The first commitment, the first vow that God made was to everybody. Whosoever. Amen. He didn't say you got to get good to come to Him. He didn't say you got to get your life in order before you come. But He said, however you are and whoever you are, you come, believe on Me, and you shall not perish and have everlasting right. Amen. He didn't make a vow just to Lafayette Pentecostal Church of God. He didn't make a vow to people that came to church this morning. He didn't make a vow to good people and not bad people. Amen? He didn't make a vow to white people and not to black people or to yellow people or brown people, but God made a, a vow and a covenant to all people, right? Whether you're tall, whether you're short, whether you're fat, whether you're skinny. Amen? Whether you got money or you have no money, God made a vow and a commitment to you today. Amen? We understand this vow and commitment this morning is for whosoever, everybody, right? All right, let's go on. What do you say next? He said he made, he made another vow. He said we shall not perish, right? So whosoever 
anybody that calls upon the name of the Lord and they believe in their heart that Jesus died and arose again and they asked Him for forgiveness of their sins. The Bible says we will not perish or we will not go to hell, right? I don't care how many times Satan gets on your shoulder and he whispers in your ear and he tells you you're not good enough to go to heaven. You tell him, God made a vow and God made a commitment to me that I have believed in Jesus Christ and I will not perish in eternal hell, but I will go to be with my Lord and Savior in heaven. Amen? No matter how many times you have messed up, no matter how many times people have told you you're not good enough, you turn around and tell them, I am who I am because I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And He made a vow and a commitment to me that I shall not perish. Amen? It's not what family you belong to. It's not what church membership you sign. It's not how much money you give into the offering. It's about believing in Jesus, right? I don't want to lead nobody astray. It's not about just coming to church and sitting in a pew. That doesn't give you a promise of eternal life. It's about believing and knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you'll believe on Him, we will not perish. Amen. No matter what the devil says, no matter what people may say. Amen. People from my past, if they knew me now, they would say there's no way. But thank God Jesus, amen, forgave me of my sin. I'm not who I used to be. I'm now a person that will not perish in eternal hell. Amen. Then the Bible says there in John 3.16, he made another vow and he made another commitment. He said, we will have, we will have, you're supposed to fill in the blank. Everlasting life. Amen. Does that mean we're never going to die on this earth? No. But the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If we have believed on Jesus, we asked Him to come into our life, He has promised us eternal life in heaven. So when we do pass in this life, we have the promise of going on to heaven to be with the Lord, right? This is just Christian Basics 101, isn't it? But sometimes I think we forget. God made a vow and a commitment to me in my life that if I will believe in Him, I will spend eternity with God in heaven. I don't have death. I don't have to fear dying. Amen? Because I know that when I take my last breath here, I'm going to take my next breath there. Why? Because I'm a preacher? No, because I believe in Jesus and I believe that God made a promise to me that if I would confess my sin to Him, amen, He would forgive me. And because He has forgiven me and because He has forgiven you today, we have the promise of eternal life. Amen? We all have a promise from God. Jesus fulfilled it on the cross. But Jesus also said that when he died, that he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And where I go, I'll come again and I'll receive you unto myself. Amen. And he said, there you might be also. So another vow and commitment has been made to you that you have a place in heaven. Amen. That may not mean a lot to a lot of some of you, but that means a lot to me. That I know that I have a place in heaven. Heaven's not just some big place where everybody runs around and nobody know, or God don't even know who's there, but God knows each and every one of us, and Jesus has prepared a specific place just for you. That's how much God loves you. And God has put a, a, a vow and a promise that I've gone to prepare a place just for you. Amen? If you, got, if you like white walls, you're going to have white walls. If you like green walls, you're going to have green walls. I believe you're going to have exactly what you want when you get there. You're not going to get in there and complain. Lord, it's not the color I liked. I'm going to go back. <laughs> it's too hot up here, Lord. Could you turn the... How many knows it's going to be perfect? And we're going to be happy when we get there. We're not going to say, shucks, I made it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> We have to make a vow and a commitment to God. God made a vow and a commitment to us. So we have to, in turn, amen, make a vow and a commitment to God that we're going to live our lives, amen, according to His Word. Amen. But we're going to go on 
But I'm thankful today that when we ask the Lord to come into our life, He don't expect us to be perfect. He only expects us to be forgiven, right? He made another vow and a commitment to us. He said in verse John chapter 1, verse 9, He says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? So many people think when they come to Jesus, they've got to get perfect and they're never going to mess up, they're never going to mistake, make a mistake again, and when they do, they fall apart and they quit church because they messed up. God don't expect us to be perfect. I believe he sh we should be striving to do our best to live for God and be striving for per perfection. But when we falter and we fail and we make a mistake and we sin, how many knows the Bible says that if we'll confess our sins, God made a vow and God made a commitment that He would forgive us of that sin. Brother Roy said it before, amen, God don't stand over you, amen, with His finger pointing in condemnation saying, you should have known better. You've been in church long enough. You shouldn't have done that. But no, the Bible says that if we'll confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us. He'll run to you. Amen. And He'll put His arms around you and say, I forgive you. Amen. Not in condemnation, but in love. And you may ask God today to forgive you of something. And you may mess up tomorrow with the same thing. Amen. Ask God again to forgive you. So many times when we mess up today and then we mess up tomorrow and we think we've messed up too many times that God won't forgive me. But the Bible says that God forgives and He forgets. Amen. If God forgave you today and you ask Him tomorrow, He forgot that He gave, forgave you yesterday. But old Satan, he likes to stir the pot, don't he? He'll get up on your shoulder and say, Man, you asked God yesterday, or you asked God two hours ago. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life I was trying to do right, and I, I asked God to forgive me, and then two hours later I slipped up and did the same thing I just asked God to forgive me for two hours ago. But thank God He forgot He forgave me two hours ago. Amen? But we as humans, we like to remember. But thank God He forgives and He forgets. He's not up there making marks. Well, Jason, he asked me 12 times today. <laughs> how many knows when you make one mistake and you ask forgiveness, how many knows it's gone? It's clean. It's not even on the slate anymore. He made a vow and a commitment. If we would confess our sin, He would be faithful and just to forgive us. It doesn't matter if you stole or you lie or you kill somebody. If you have sinned and you've made a mistake and you confess that sin to God, God will forgive you. Amen? That's a vow and a commitment that He has made to us. Amen. How dedicated are you to confessing? See, we live in a day and hour where we want to justify it. Or we want to call it something else besides a sin or, you know. We want to call it other things. We want to dress it up. How many knows if we make a mistake, we need to be committed that if I sin, I will confess it to God. I'm not going to try to justify it. I'm not going to try to dress it up. I'm not going to try to call it something else. If I messed up, I messed up. How many knows we need to take ownership today? But we live in a day and hour where everybody says, well, God still loves you just like you are. But God does love you like you are, but He expects us to confess it and ask for forgiveness of it. Amen? God's not condoning it. Amen? God loves sinners, but God hates sin. Amen? So if we mess up, we need to be dedicated and say, God, please forgive me. All right, let's move on. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. When we believe in Jesus and we accept the gift, we are saying to God, I give you my life. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, you are not your own. For you have been bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 
Amen. We must remember when we believe in Christ and we ask Him to come into our lives and we give our lives to Him. How many knows we can't give it and take it back, give it and take it back, give it and take it back? How many knows we've been bought with a price and we're no longer our own? We belong to Him, right? And the Bible says to glorify Him in our body in our spirit, which belongs to Him. So I ask you the question again, how dedicated are you in fulfilling this vow? Are you bringing glory to God by the way you live, by the way you talk, by where you go? Are you bringing glory to yourself or someone else? Amen? We're not our own, remember? We're to glorify God in our body and our spirits, which are God's. Amen. I'm not saying you've got to walk a toe-to-toe line and you're never going to, amen, have fun and do anything else like that. How many knows we can still have fun and love Jesus? We're so focused on the do's and don'ts that we forget we can still have fun serving God. Amen. Uh, people say... You can't do this, you can't do that, and you can't do this, and you can't do that when you come to church. Guess what? I don't want to do those things no more. I don't want to do things that hurt God. I want to do things that please God. Amen? It's not that I can't cuss, drink, and carry on anymore. I choose not to do those things anymore. Amen? Because God made a vow to me, and I made a vow to God. And guess what? I'm happy in the vow that I've made. Amen? Are you? All right, let's move on. How dedicated are you to loving God? How dedicated are you to loving God? Don't look at your neighbor, don't look at somebody else. Think about it this morning. How dedicated am I to loving God? Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13, it says, It shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto my commands, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul. God doesn't want to take second place in your life. God made a vow and a commitment when He gave His only begotten Son to come to this earth. Jesus made a vow and a commitment to you and I when He stretched His arms out on that cross and He died and He gave His life for us. He showed us how much He loved us. Amen. So I ask you the question, how dedicated are you to loving God? Do you love God when everything's going good? Do you love God when you got time? We're to love the Lord thy God first and foremost above everything else. We're to love God before we love our wife or our husband, aren't we? We're to love God before we love our kids and our grandkids. I believe when you learn to love God first, He'll help you to love your wife better. He'll help you to love your husband better. He'll help you to love your kids even better and your grandkids. But so many times we, amen, God is out of sight or out of mind. He's not right in front of us. And a lot of times we love everybody else and then we love God. But we're to love God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. We're to love God first and foremost. He said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And when we love other people and other things before we love God, we're allowing other things to become more important to God. We're not fulfilling that vow or commitment, are we? And God takes vows and commitments seriously. So I ask you, how dedicated are you to loving God? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, and I ask you another question. How dedicated are you in acknowledging God? In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall... See, another vow, another promise that He made. He said, you acknowledge me, I'll direct your path. We have so many vows and promises that God has made to us. And we are so blessed today. And a lot of times we live outside our blessings because we fail to do our part. We'll walk down a path we, shouldn't ha- we didn't have to walk down because we failed to acknowledge God. And then when we get down this path, we turn around and we blame God. And God's like, hey man, I had nothing to do with it. That was on you. You chose that path. You went that way. You walked away. You went this way. And God said, just acknowledge me and I'll direct your path. Hey man, God doesn't want us to acknowledge Him so He can put His hand over us and control us. Like Sister Poole said this morning, God gives us a free will. He won't make you do anything. 
But if you will acknowledge Him, He will direct your path. He wants to be a part of your everyday life. Amen? Not just a Sunday. He's not just a Sunday God, but He's an everyday God. So I ask you today, how good are you, or how dedicated are you to acknowledging God? Do you acknowledge God in all your ways? Or do you acknowledge God when you find yourself in a hunk of a heap of mess and you don't know what to do? Or you find yourself in a situation and you don't know where to go, so you go to God. How many knows we need to go to God first? Amen? And maybe we'll save ourselves from some situations we don't have to go through. But God doesn't want to hover over us. God wants to be a part of us. Amen? The Bible says He sits high, but He looks low. And He says He's numbered the very hairs that you have on your head. That's how much God loves you. That's how much God cares about you. He numbered the hairs that you have on your head. Amen. This morning in closing, I want to ask you a couple questions. How dedicated are you to prayer, to reading the Word? How dedicated are you to coming to church and to tithing and supporting the church? How dedicated are you to the ver- to be the very best you can be to God? How dedicated are you to that? Are you just, well, well... Maybe today's just a checkup. Maybe it's just a refreshing in our minds. Amen. If we have made a vow and a commitment to God, we need to fulfill that vow and commitment that we have made. Amen. God takes vows and promises very seriously. I don't know about you, but I could be a little more dedicated. I'm the only one. I'll raise both hands. I say I could be a little more committed, a little more dedicated. I'm not arrived yet. I'm human, just like you. But how dedicated are you to the things of God? God takes vows and He takes your life and my life very, very seriously. He was willing to allow His Son to come to this earth to be beaten and crucified so that you and and I might walk free from our sins. Jesus was dedicated enough to be willing to allow them to do to Him what they did to Him on the cross, that you and I might walk free from our sins. Just as Jessica and Christian, they brought their son to be dedicated to God, I hope today each and every one of us sitting here today have made a personal vow and commitment that I will serve God. Amen? Not because... Mom made me, or Dad made me, but because he came to an age of acknowledgement and he chose to choose God as his Lord and Savior because his mother and his father taught him the things of God. Not because Mom and Dad made him serve God, but because he chose to serve God. And I hope today that we've all, you, each and every one of us, have made that commitment and that vow that I will serve God. As we stand to our feet this morning and they return to the music, I have one last scripture to share. How many will agree with me today that life is too short? Two people? How many agree with me today and say life is too short? James chapter 4, verse 14. It says, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. We don't know what tomorrow holds. For what is your life? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now, is the accepted time. We don't have the promise of tomorrow. We have the promise of right now. God made a promise and God made a commitment. If you'll confess your sins to Him, He's faithful and just to forgive us. But today, if we could look into hell, I don't want to think about how terrible it is, but if we could just look into hell, if we could walk to somebody and speak to them, I believe they would speak to us and say, you know what? 
I was going to make a vow and I was going to commit my life to God. But I didn't get around to it. My life was gone before I had the chance to get it right. Or maybe there be those that say, I made a vow and a commitment to God. And I chose to walk away from that commitment and that vow. So today I find myself in a place that I don't have to be. How many knows nobody has to go to hell? Jesus died for all. We talked about it. But the only reason why people spend eternity away from God is because they reject the gift that Christ offered them. As we bow our heads and close our eyes today, as God searches our heart, I ask you the question again. How dedicated are you to the vows that you have made to God? How dedicated are you to your relationship with God? Maybe God is last on your list today. Maybe today you want to make some changes. The altars are open today where you can come and say, God, I make a new commitment. I make a new vow to you from this day forward. I will fulfill those vows and commitments that I have made to you. If that's you today, would you come? The altars are open. Come and say, Lord, I want to make a new commitment. I want to make a new covenant with you. I want to make some new promises that I promise that I'm going to fulfill. Anybody at all, the altars are open. Or maybe you don't want to get out of your seat right where you're standing today. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, tell God, I make a new commitment. I make a new promise to you that I will serve you the best that I can. And that's all that God asks, just serve Him the best you can. If I mess up, I will confess it and I will ask you to forgive me. If I make a mistake, I won't try to hide it. I won't try to justify it, but I will confess it. Amen. As they sing this chorus, if you want to pray, the altars are open.
Aren't you thankful today? He doesn't cast you away. Amen. the stars one and all he knows how much sand is on the shore he sees every sparrow that falls he made the mountains and the seas he's in control of everything of all creatures great and small and he knows my name every step that i take every move that i make every tear that i cry and he knows my name when i'm overwhelmed by the pain they can't see the light of day tomorrow will bring I can't tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't have all the answers to the questions of life but I know in whom I have believed and he knows my name Every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. like you don't mean a lot to a lot of people but God knows who you are and God knows exactly what you go through each and every day and God made another vow and a promise he said I'll never leave you nor I forsake you but I'll be with you to the very end so no matter how hard life may get you can remember God is with me amen I hope this morning the word of God has challenged your hearts to make a greater commitment to the Lord Amen. Remember service tonight, 6 o'clock. Sister Poole, will you dismiss us in prayer today?